I'm Coach Jen Malcolm. I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking it, you up next. Keep the going so hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break the sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask beat Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, go here. Yeah, let's go, SLT Nation. What it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow that's right kt and i are searching all over this country and we are finding sensational superstars future phenoms incredible human beings who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams and today kt we get to take it to the hardwood except it ain't no basketball that's right we are going to play one of the fastest growing games in the country right now and that is is volleyball ladies and gentlemen without further ado let's make some noise coming to the sports life talk family 13 years coaching in the game in her first year as the newly mentored appointed head coach of the cal berkeley golden bounds let's make some noise hailing out of shayla our coach jen malcolm <laughs> Hey, except, uh, you know, I, I hate to be cheesy, ladies and gentlemen, but you used to be a middle blocker, right? When you was... We, You're going to so, go Malcolm in the middle. Come on, man. We got to say Malcolm in the middle. We got to say Malcolm in the middle. Hey, y'all, welcome to the show. If this is your first time checking out the platform, welcome to the SLT Experience. I am your host, the mouth of uh, the South B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. Put your head L's up, Mr. Yee. Is in the building and I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the, the choir storm. Shh. All facts, no cap. The head coach KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great, B. Jones. Jen, how's the weather out there in California right now? It's it's sunny today, which is awesome. I guess it was rainy all weekend. Um, you know, California in this time is kind of in the rainy area, but just be 60s all week so i'm i'm loving it 60s all week b jones and we're here it's like maybe 40 tomorrow it'll be 60 the day after that and 82 after that but b jones to answer your question man i'm doing great i think this is our first time being at cal right i i think it is our first time being at cal we've done a couple of volleyball episodes i can't remember who, who did we say we were we were two two amazing volleyball players like the carry uh carry wash and misty misty and, yep carry yeah. Washington. Yeah. That, that's us. That's a we. That's us. A podcast game, coach. So <laughs> that's yeah, what we you like. Ain't gonna see us out there in the full that uniform. <laughs> you know, we got to be a little more tailored, bro. Let's go. I guarantee you the clicks will go up if we do, though. <laughs> get, from sure. getting made fun of. All right, coach. Let's get this show kicked off the right way with the moment of truth. This is a fun game we play as an icebreaker just to get to know Coach a little bit better, except we are going to test KT and I ability to study, okay? So the rules are super simple. This is our version of two truths and a lie. Coach is going to give us three facts, but here's the kick. One of those facts is an untruth. KT and I will have exactly 60 seconds to deliberate work as a team and try to figure out which one of these truths or which one of these facts are untruth or, or, or what we call on the streets a lie. Sorry, mama. All right, coach, give us your give us your three facts. All right. Fact number one, I grew up on a farm and we raised a thousand pigs and 500 cattle and had 600 acres of land. Um, number two, I wear a size men's 13 shoe. And number three, I played at Syracuse and Iowa State during my college career.
I mean, this I is got, easy. I, this I is got easy. this one. I got We did good one. research on this one. one. We know it's a stick one. The only <laughs> thing, though, KT, is she's a sneaker, so I know she know her size. That's the only yeah. thing. That she, she loves sneakers. She's taking it easy on us, B. Jones. She, I, she I took it easy. She worked on the, yeah. on the farm and all that, so it's the and, and I and I And I don't know her profile. I saw she transferred yeah, from, from Syracuse to Iowa State. So yeah, we, we got you. Coach, coach, we got you. Coach, <laughs> number two is the untruth. That's true. Yeah, that's back to back. That's two wins in a row, ladies and gentlemen. And Thirty-one. We are doing terrible. <laughs> we, we still trash in the game, but at least we got a win. So that always sets the stage for an amazing show, a good energy. So this is what we need you to do, Coach. You know what it's like to get in the car, especially in California. Y'all got the top down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you know you get in the car, you get all comfortable. You got to take that right hand, Coach. Lift it up for me, and I need you to reach over your left shoulder. I need you to grab that seatbelt and buckle up. We're about to take y'all on a crazy ride. All Welcome right. to the show. If this is your first time coming to the show, we want to say thank you one more given where you've been all our lives. But this is our point to ask a huge favor of y'all. That's right. Sports Life Talk is nothing without you. So we need to ask you right now for your unbridled support. I'm talking about support that you will scream from the rooftops, and guess what? It won't cost you anything. We need you to do what we call the SCT Trinity. On the count of three, I'm going to do a lot of hooting and hollering. I need you to, one, smash that subscribe button. We're going to be the hardest working podcast. We're going to keep giving you amazing guests, amazing stories, and super inspirational stories. Number two, I need you to hit that like button, because when you hit that like button, you tell Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and, and all of them people out there that you appreciate it and you like this show. And that's what it does. It bubbles all the way up to the top. <laughs> and number three, last but not least, sharing is caring. You know what? You will appreciate it when somebody sends you a great link that means that you like you check it out. You'd be like, man, thank you for sending that to me. Well, you could be a hero. Send this link. Hit that share button and send it to all your contacts, your people, your grandmamas, your, your, your play cousins, and let the folks know what's cracking in Cal Berkeley. I love saying Cal Berkeley. <laughs> got to let them know what the golden bells is doing up to all right coach when i do all this hollering is is, is marshawn lynch and the golden bells gonna show us some love yes look hey just that simple that's see volleyball is a simple sport we don't need to get to we don't need to get to too in depth it's just three letters yes all right y'all come on make some noise for you boys let's do it like we true to it one two three Boo! <laughs> yeah, KT, that is literally my favorite part of the show. Why? Because now you are rocking with us, and KT and I, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. We only do family around Sports Life Talk, and that's how much you mean to us. Coach Jim Malcolm, what is your favorite emoji that you are using right now when you're texting family, friends, players, other coaches? What is that emoji that you're using right now that's a staple? Uh, in your phone. Mine is, is, is pretty much the laughter one, the crying one, the crying emoji. To be All right. Well, well, then if you did any of those three, if you, even if you thought about doing one of those three, hey, hey, drop that crying, laughing emoji in the chat so we can recognize you and thank you. And, and Kevin, what are we going to tell them, man? Thank you. That's it. We're going to keep it simple. <laughs> we just want to give you that digital love, digital pound, and we appreciate you so much. So, Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to find out what makes Malcolm in the middle kick. We're about to find out what makes her so great. And this journey is a crazy one. So y'all welcome to the Sports Life Talk Initiation. You, you are on one today, B. Jones. I'm telling you that. All right. To initiate you to the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Top five music artists. I would say Burna Boy. Um, David O. Um... Um, Eric Bellinger, Jack Carlo, and I'm gonna go Queen B, Beyonce. Yeah, I'm sorry, Coach. I need you to take that makeup off because you you got a sister playlist now, Coach. I, what's going on? What's, the Devito? What you, you she, she say? She say the Burner Boy? Oh my goodness! The Eric Bellinger? Come on, KT. Yeah. What you giving her? Well, Coach, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. But there's no way with fire like that I can give you anything less than five. Super heat. I don't think I can give her anything less than 10. <gasps> like that. You know what, B. Jones? We're going to give her 22. Let's give her 22. 
and I don't know how I went 22. I wanted to go 24. B Jones, but I figured she'll probably make up for that in a couple of seconds. Yeah, she gonna get. She gonna. She gonna get some more. We gonna. We gonna earn some yeah. more on this one. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? Favorite superhero, I would say Superwoman. Um, I'm all about female empowerment and being a badass. Honestly, I don't know if I can say that on here, but I'm gonna say it. Yes, um, you can. <laughs> so, you know, I think being who I am and where I've come from. Um, you know, being that role model for girls and having role models when I was a younger kid is a big thing for me. So Superwoman it is. I think she's wonderful, um, has a lot of power and strength and, you know, can kick anybody's ass, honestly. So that's what we're looking for in these days. Yeah, we kind of figured out with your top five list. You just said <laughs> that you probably like to fight, so I'm going to keep this. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know and, uh, she, it was a lot of what is it reggaeton or uh, afro beats yeah, that's, it's not it's not it's just of love kt it's yeah, a love I mean, you know, can i just have that man she just said <laughs> ass like spice so i mean let me have it. Nah, she, she is spicy she yeah, is spicy is, so. you're right you're right <laughs> all right so you're probably wondering why we asked that superhero question coach because we see coaches as superheroes so mm -hmm. with that said every good superhero needs their own theme music so what's your theme sound be i mean i have to go with Cyclone by T-Pain because it's weird. I was at Iowa State and that's like our song back in the day and that's what I would want. So I'm going to go with that song. Now, Coach, how tall are you? I am six, six one, six feet, somewhere in there. Now, Coach, can you dance? Because Cyclone is a dance song. I, I got a little move. I don't know if I can still do it, but, you know, back in the day, I was pretty good. So Yeah, all right. Okay, okay. We might have to test that out one of these days, Coach. Yeah, well, we may test it right now. They're kind of teed me up perfectly. All right, Coach, so we have a running debate on this show. Okay. I want to be a singer. B. Jones wants to be the dancer. So we <laughs> need for you to break the tie on your episode. So would you rather be a singer or a dancer? Um, I would rather be a singer. I feel like I have the dance moves down. I'm not <laughs> great. I can sing in the car with nobody around, but mm, I wouldn't do it in public. That's another one for the singers, B. Jones. <laughs> I know, I know. Hi, B. Jones. <laughs> He's okay. He's used to losing on that one. All right. So what is something that volleyball has taught you? Don't, don't, don't do that. B Jones. You know, you've been losing. You ever doing all this. Stop. I didn't say like, you are not both. Y'all don't say it at all. You know what? B Jones, I don't want to talk to him. I'm talking to coach. Just stop talking to him. All right. So what is something that volleyball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Um, I would say to be authentic to yourself. Um, you know, I, I am who I am and I have always embrace that honestly so i think on the court um i learned how to embrace that embrace like b jones says the spiciness honestly and who i am and being intense um and just being kind of a bulldog uh, my old coach used to call me a bulldog and she'd like if anything needs to get done you go to jen so um i feel like i've kind of embraced that part of me and saying like whatever needs to get done is going to get done and however it's going to need to get done is going to do it so um I think just being authentic to who I am and carrying that forward um, in all facets of life. I had to give her another one, KT. <laughs> you don't see that thug in her? I'm telling you. I do. I do. Bill, bulldog and she kicking ass the whole episode, B. Jones. Man, you, you ain't got no people from Louisiana, do you? Because you kind of got that, that, that Tony Sacherays. You kind of got that flavor. No, I don't. And, you know, I'm from a farm. So who knew? Who knew That's that? Right. You're from Iowa. Iowa. You're you know? from Iowa. That's right. <laughs> All right, Coach, so B and I, we're going to produce a movie that's centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actress. So who should we get to play you in the story of your life? <sighs> um, I'm going to go Angelina Jolie. Ooh. I have been told that I have her, like, lips, the big full lips. So, and again, I think she's a great actress and she has a lot of good movies that you've said fighting. So let's go with fighting and, you know, somebody that can handle their own. Well, so, was off the chain. But Kevin, I got to give mine since we're talking about fighting. I, it's it's funny because I I thought this from the point I saw you, Uma Thurman. I got to go kill Bill. Oh. Yes, I can see Uma Thurman. That's see, a great I, one. I had two. I had um, what's it? What's Tom Brady's baby mom? Is it Michelle? No, that's not. No, her. Uh, wow! I cannot believe I can't think of Evil Uncle. Nah, no, I can't right. think. It's a model. I know who you're talking about. Why can't I think of her name right now? You just go ahead. Keep no, I'm going. not talking about his wife. I'm talking about his ex-wife, Giselle. Not Giselle. I'm talking about no, the baby mama, the first one. Yep. Um, Bridget, Bridget something. Bridget something. Monahan? Bridget Monahan. I think that yeah, okay. <laughs> and I also had the girl that played Supergirl. Do you ever watch that show? Oh, yeah. 
Melissa, something with a B. That's all I know. But I think she could, I, you know, she could do that. All right, Coach. So this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you during this initiation. Okay. B. Jones and I, we love to travel. And when we travel, we got to eat. So mm. when we come out there to Cali to hang out with you, what's going to be that one food spot you're going to recommend? And what's your go-to meal there? The staple here, in the first week I was here, I think we ate at this place about five times because it's so good. It's called Mezzo. It is a like deli sandwich um, soup salad place. And the sandwiches are huge, like as big as your head. The soup is amazing. Um, so I'm going to go with the BLTA that they have there. And the chicken curry, the Thai chicken curry soup. So those are my two go tos. Now that chi- that Thai chicken curry soup sounds delicious. I just got onto this curry wave, mm-hmm. and it is absolutely delicious. KT, have you ever had a curry dish before? No. Oh, well, we got to get you on this Thai curry. I-, I haven't had that dish, but I know Coach on that curry. That's that's probably a good. Uh, Isn't that kind of spicy though? It's it's a little. It, it depends. They can make it spicy. Yeah, they can make it super spicy, but really, it's more about this this kind of aromatics. I, I don't know. It's kind of like a savory, comforting type flavor. It, it's kind of crazy, bro. But yet at the same time, it's all delicious and just it just. Yeah, hits I, all I know it sounds so delicious, but you know, I can't do spicy. I can't be down there looking bad in front of the coach. Nah, just tell him. Just tell him you need a one. Just tell him you need a one, KT. All right, zero. All right, so it's time to break out the playbook of excitement because we're about to welcome a true game changer to the podcast arena. She's not just a coach. She's a maestro, orchestrating victories and weaving stories of triumph on the court. So let's get ready to slam into the world of insights as we introduce extraordinary head coach, Miss Jen Malcolm, for an unforgettable podcast session. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. If you are right now a Golden Bear fan and you are wondering what is going on with the volleyball team, you just got blessed. That's right. You are go- you're about to find out more about this amazing person that is now your women's head coach of the indoor volleyball team. And I'm telling you, I got a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of talking about Cal Berkeley over the next couple of years because y'all are cooking with grease. But Coach Malcolm, before you got this amazing post, and uh, got the opportunity to become a, 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 a superstar in the college game. Let's take them back to the beginning, coach. Let's go back to the form E I E I O with all of the <laughs> with all of the, of the horses and the cows and the chickens and the goats and the pigs. Let's take them back, coach. Uh, tell us your story. Tell us when did you start playing volleyball and when did you fall in love with the game? Uh, So I started playing volleyball probably in sixth grade and just like through middle school and um, my high school coach at the time, like had a little team that we formed and we traveled around Iowa and did like small ball AAU. So played with my high school girls from basically sixth grade until high school. Um, Everybody else was kind of getting into club back in the day and I never played club volleyball until I was 17 and traveled to Omaha, Nebraska, which is about two hours one way. And back and forth. Um, up, up until my junior year of high school, I was actually a basketball player and played AU basketball and thought I was going to play basketball. And then I ended up switching, um, just fell in love with volleyball, volleyball a little bit more. And my dad was very upset. My dad was a basketball player and basketball coach. So me going over to volleyball was a big move. Um, so yeah, I got couple offers right out of, out of high school and went to Syracuse my first two years. And from there, Transferred back home to Iowa State and finished up my last two and a half years there. Um, loved every experience of it and got into volleyball pretty much after that. I, I coached while I was in college and coached a club team. Um, so had a little bit there and then took a year off after college and pretty much went back into college coaching, was a graduate assistant. And here we go, 14 years later, 13 years later, I'm, I'm here. This might be kept. We we might have to title this week Cyclone Week, KT. This is our second time getting the Iowa State alumni representing Ames, Iowa, in the building, Coach. But, but you 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 made this transition. You hoping you start playing volleyball? Did it come natural to you, or when when did you when did it recognize or, or it hit with you that like, hey, I'm damn good at this game. I can make some noise with this thing. Um, I actually was voted like AAU player of the year in Iowa, my eighth grade year. So going into my freshman year. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Like, I think I can make this work, but I was so stuck on like basketball still. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, so I just, you know, stuck with volleyball. And then finally I got an invite to go to a club, 
um, and and try out for that. So I was like, let me go try this. And pretty much after that, I was like, I'm, I'm done with basketball. I still played basketball in high school, but I was done pursuing basketball at the next level and went all volleyball. We're we going to get to the coaching, y'all, but uh, we got to talk about some things. And because this transition, it, to my opinion, is just absolutely nuts because I'm imagining you living on this farm. You're getting up at five o'clock in the morning and doors ain't getting locked, you know, because your pops probably got a shotgun. Somebody stepped foot on the property. It's a whole different type of interaction. But th this this country girl, a ranch lover, moved all the way out to New York and Syracuse. Mm -hmm. That had to be a crazy transition for you, coach. What what was that like having to learn bus schedules and the smells and just it's, it's a total different world. Concrete everywhere. Ain't no fresh grass. What, what was that like, coach? It was for sure a, like an eye-opening experience, honestly. Like, walked in the first time and luckily I had teammates that were from like, my best friend's from Toronto. She went to school there with me, so She'd been on the bus system, but I remember taking the bus from campus one time and had to make the connection in downtown Syracuse, which, you know, isn't the greatest area at times. And, and then we went to the mall and I was like, okay, somebody needs to come pick us up from the mall because I'm not doing this <laughs> bus trip again. Uh, so that is probably the one time I've ridden public transportation like that. After that, I really haven't done it. Um, so trying to become a city girl, but not really yet. Um, but yeah, it was definitely wild. I mean, I'm from a town of 600 people and I graduated with 35 kids. So going to Syracuse, which is like, I think 180,000 and Syracuse is alone is 11,000 people at the, at the school. So definitely wild, um, experiences and just, but I loved it. And I think it made me appreciate the world outside of where I come from and want more experiences like that. Well, I tell you what, I guess in Kansas they have red slippers, but in in uh in in the city in the Iowa we got we got uh what is it, orange or what is it, orange and gray slippers because you tapped them things and you went back home and there's no place like home. You found your way back to Iowa State. And I'm only talking about this because you didn't just go back home. You took a year, you sat out, you paid your time, and then the Cyclones, hey, T-Pain was playing, and everybody had to deal with y'all because not only did you go to the Sweet 16 your junior year, then your senior year, you go into the Elite Eight. Y'all went on a run. How crazy was it to be on that squad and make history and take the school to a place it had never been before? It was awesome. I mean, I think that's one of my, my favorite parts of my career, honestly, and I think our team at that point was a bunch of kids that had – chip on their shoulder. We've always been told that we're not good enough. Iowa state wasn't on the map. You know, um, basically my, my teammates, one of my teammates was there for the first, like, I don't know, before my coach got there and she went one in 19 her freshman year, her last year, her senior year, um, we made it to the seat 16. So we made this huge jump and it was just because we, we didn't take any crap from anybody. Like we honestly believe that we could do anything and that's what the way that we approached it. So, you know, my senior year, we went up against um, Minnesota, who I think was ranked seventh at the time, beat them. We went down and played Oregon, who was, I don't know, top top whatever as well. And then we got matched up with Texas. Not a fan of Texas, but uh, <laughs> and in my career. So, you know, I have this beef with Texas. But um, I think, you know, just that we had so much belief in ourselves and nobody could tell us anything different. And that's just the way it was. And our, our head coach, who's actually still the coach at Iowa State now, um, you know, just allowed us to be who we were. And we, we were a bunch of dogs, honestly. We just didn't really care and just went out and did our thing. Now, see, that's where the spiciness come from, KT. She was on a, she was on a team full of jalapenos, man. They was, uh, they were making some serious noise. But let's get, let's get to this coaching thing because, uh, you paid your time. Thirteen years, you paved your way to get to this, this point. And, uh, and what I, I said it earlier, and I'm gonna stand by it. It is absolutely the fastest growing game in America. And that's not just me making it up. That is, uh, I, I can pull the article up that said this is proven. But uh, what, what was that journey like, transitioning from player to coach, and, and uh, you even got the chance to coach at your alumni which i thought that was a pretty cool story in itself but but tell us what the last 13 years have been uh been like for you it's been great i mean i've, I've loved my time at everywhere some stops have been longer than others um but you know i've come from i was a, i coached club when i was in college and then i went to being a graduate assistant and then i did my time as a second assistant and having some director of ops roles in there as well and then i went to first assistant recruiting coordinator then I moved to Iowa State, and then I was associate head coach, recruiting coordinator. Then I went to UCLA, 
um, was associate head coach there for a year and now head coach. So literally have done anything and everything you could think of um, between flights and laundry and I don't know, be a mom, somebody's mom and aunt and whatever else needs to happen, big sister, and just making sure that everything's taken care of. But um, yeah, it's, it's been a great journey and met a lot of great people along the way. And I think that's part of the, the thing that I love about it is, you know, I still have friends everywhere that I've been and keep up with them. And um, it's just been everything that I, I could imagine, honestly. I am thrilled with the profession that I chose and I'm happy that I'm here. Why, why should a Golden Bear fan who is a volleyball fan, why, why should they be excited about this new version of the of the Cal Berkeley Golden Bass? They are working their tails off right now. We're in our eight hours um, and they are giving everything they have. Um, you know, our, our outside Maggie Lee was Pac-12 freshman of the year last year which is outstanding for a team that, you know, we, they were bottom of the, of the Pac-12 pretty much. So um, we have her and then we have really good pieces around us and we are fighting for everything. And I think, you know, we're trying to portray in them like, hey, you can be a badass. And that's what we're trying to get the confidence going. So once our confidence gets there, everybody better watch out because, you know, we're, we're throwing down the gym right now and they're getting a lot better. Is, is volleyball a big sport at, 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 uh, at Cal? Is that one that the people come out and show some support to? I mean, like, we, we all see in Nebraska and Wisconsin and UT do their things. But, you know, I think some of the other schools kind of get left behind because they, they steal all the press clippings, right? But uh, but what what is the vibe, the culture like at, at, at Cal when it comes to volleyball? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's it's been down a little bit. And I think that's just... Winning. winning. Yeah, you got to win. Winning. People, but, people know, support winners. Yeah. Yep, but... um. I'm excited for what we have, and I think everybody should be able to come out now and say, like, hey, let's go see Cal Volleyball because we are, you know, making noise and would love everybody in the Bay Area to come out and support. Um, that's my shout out. Everybody get there. Um, but making sure that everybody comes out. Well, I tell you what, I uh, we've had some, we've had some volleyball coaches and players come on the show, and uh, it, it didn't take long for me to realize that you guys are built differently. Yeah, you spicy, but I think you gotta have that type of mentality to play volleyball. I'm gonna tell you why, because we sat there, KT and I sat there, we watched the game, and in that game, one team went on like a six point streak, and y'all girls volleyball, y'all are brutal. I mean, like every point, y'all celebrating, hot, doing backflips. I mean, I'm talking about y'all hitting each other, and I'm screaming it's like it's like you know how in in in, in a basketball you do a dunk and they go oh you know but y'all mm -hmm. do that after every play yep. <laughs> it, don't matter, it don't matter what the score is and i'm just imagining myself being down six or five or six points they on a run and they over there doing like that and i gotta still maintain my composure stay focused stay laser sharp and turn that whole momentum around so this is this is like a level of focus and intensity like no other how do you how do you give those young ladies that that type of mindset how do you build that up in a program to where they can handle those momentum handle those runs learn how to close out a, a learn learn how to close out a team in the third set to uh to, to win a game how, how do you how do you how do you influence and engage and, and transfer these emotions Yep. I think it's, you know, it's next play. It's next ball. Like, you know, you, you can't get all six points back in one play. I think that's the best thing. Like in basketball, you can score three points and get back in it a little bit. Volleyball, it's, it's one at a time, honestly. So you can be down, but you just got to keep chipping away because, you know, you're not, you're not going to get in one. And it's, you almost got to be a goldfish. You got to have a, a short memory, short term memory. It's like, all right, next play, like you got to move on. Um, and just, just keep battling because you just never know. Like somebody, it's all momentum. It's all the mental state. Like you could be up and feeling good. And then all of a sudden, like one thing changes, you coach either calls a timeout. There's a challenge. Somebody doubles and like, or you hit a ball out and your best player kind of freaks out a little bit. So you just never know what's going to happen. And I think that's what I love about volleyball. It's like, you could be up a lot. You could be down. Um, I remember being down one time in college. This is when we played to 30. This is way back in the day, but we were down 29 to 22 i think it was and we came back to win or like no we came back to win and it was like and it was in the my the sweet 16 run that we had my junior year so it was it was crazy but you have to do it you just have to stay the course make sure that you're blocking out all the noise um and moving forward but it's it's only one at a time that's all you get you don't get seven points you don't get three points so 
It's the year of Mamba. It's 2024. And you know, Mamba is, it stands for a lot more than just basketball. It's a mentality. Mm -hmm. It's the way we approach things. It's becoming that dog that you became. So tell us your Mamba moment, coach. And it could be when you was playing, but or it could be when you was coaching. What's that moment that your confidence finally found its home and you, you blacked out, you pulled off something. And you was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm official. I'm a Mamba. <laughs> I will say it was that the Elite Eight run that we had back in 2008. Um, we were down in the Sweet 16 round. We were down to Oregon 2-0. And you guys know, like, you got three games to win. Yeah. And we went into two set two yeah, between two set, sets, two and three. And we went into the locker room. And I'm like, we are not blankety-blank losing this game. Like... On my other teammate, my setter on the team, um, who was very feisty like me, said the same thing. And we rallied. We, we won. We came back to win 3-2. So it was like a huge moment. Um, and I, at that point in my career, I was like so beat up. Like my shoulder was hurting. My legs were hurting. I'm, I'm an old grandma. I'm 23 playing this game. And um, so it was just fun to see like the young kids that we had on that team. We had five freshmen playing pretty much on that team with us. And they all just kind of rallied and was like, yep, we're not winning or we're not losing this game. We're going to win. So I think for me, that was like the moment where I kind of found myself. I know it was towards the end of my career and I kind of always had it, but it was like one of those factors, like everybody rallied, rallied around and was like, yes, we're going to do this thing. And we went out and did it. So I think that for me, was like my mama moment um, towards the end of my career. Coach, do you know somebody went to Oregon at that time and that story causes them PTSD? Do you know somebody is emotionally distraught? They hear you tell that story. Like, I cannot believe we let them come back up two sets and beat us in that game. Oh, man, that, that had to be a brutal loss, but an amazing win. All right, Coach. Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We are going to do a little one-on-one, -on -one and you are now officially calling all the shots, okay? This is our version of Would You Rather. So the rules are super simple. We're going to go three rounds. Each round, KT and I will both make a pitch. Whichever one of those pitches you like the most, you select the mouth of the south or the head coach. That host will get a point. The first host to get two points of the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship round as Kevin is on a two game win streak. Ooh. Kevin, I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to let you, we're going we to follow the rules. Get, a, get us kicked off, sir. Would you rather coach a player that you recruited that no one gave them a chance? They make it to the Volleyball Hall of Fame and then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without your love and guidance or or oh. You about to create a dynasty at, at, at Cal Berkeley. You about to go on a 30-year run. You're going to be playing for championships. I'm not going to guarantee you a championship win, but I'm talking about your team is going to be in the conversation and considered one of the blue bloods over the next 30 years. And when you retire, your name is going to be on that floor. They're going to remember Jan Malcolm as being one of the most elite coaches that has ever come through this program. Oh, that is a tough one. Um, That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh with head coach over there. <sighs> I mean, well, coach, you was about to get your 24th stitch. Heard it. Heard it. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> oh, God. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. You 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 sold that one so I well. Tried. I thought that she actually was gonna go your way. I tried, man. Everybody take the player, though. I don't know what we got to do to get a selfish coach on this thing, but all right, come on. <laughs> it's here. Round two. Would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show? It's going to be on YouTube where you get to interview other volleyball coaches, you know, putting more spice on the volleyball game mm -hmm. while eating at some of the best places in the world or... Can't wait. I'm in trouble, y'all, because she a foodie and she loves to travel. So here we go. I'm going to shoot my best shot on this one, coach. But I got a film crew coming. And we're going we gonna to sit down and we're going to follow the Golden Bears in the locker room, in the weight room, on the practice courts, in the, in the, in, on the, in the long bus ride and the chartered flights. We're going to follow this team and show brick by brick with this, how this program has been revitalized, creating energy in the California and getting the whole community out to support y'all. And this is what's going to make it great, Coach. We're going to put this documentary in this television show on Netflix for the world to see, Coach. Well, this coach won't see it because I don't have Netflix, but um, I'm going to go out of the South. Like, Yeah! 
Yeah. Yeah. Coach, I, I'm sorry. I love it. I love the idea of the food, but you know, I got to put my my program out there and let everybody. Know. Oh, I knew once he said that everything. I already knew what was going down around. You don't have to apologize to me, so. Well, Coach, I'm gonna send you my Netflix password after the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, for, the, for the final for the final round, KT and now we stop doing talking and we let our passion and our love for sneakers do the talking for us. That's right, Coach. We know you a sneakerhead, and if you a sneakerhead like myself, y'all come hang out with us Wednesday nights at eight o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. KT and I will part of, along with the rest of the Sports Life Talk crew. We do a live show, and it's not just about sports; it's about relationships. It's about pop culture entertainment i do a segment called the drop in which i talk about all the new sneakers that's coming out so y'all make sure you come eat your dinner a little bit early on wednesday nights and come hang out with your boys and the rest of the sports life talk crew but with that being said coach malcolm before the show kt and i we looked at our collections and we picked a pair of shoes that we thought would represent you the most all right coach so on the count of three we need you to say hold that sneaker and when you say that we're going to show you the heat that we brought for this episode. Now, remember, right. it's one and one. This is overtime. So whoever you select, that host will not only win this round, but they will win this game of championship rounds. Okay. All right. Here we go, coach. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Yeah. Going to do a be oh, well, see. Here we are. I got to go. I'm a side. Hey. Oh, man. This Move is a rematch. Body. We, Move this is a like match. a cyclone. I gotta go mouth of the south. Yeah! <laughs> it feels so good, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, coach, when we go to Mezzo's, your Thai chili sweet soup is on me. I got you, coach. All the curry you want. Hey, we did it. Go to Bells. Marshawn Lynch, look at me. Oh, my goodness. I feel so good about this one. I feel so good about this one. Thank you, coach. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, coach. The title of the show is you got next. We intentionally called that show this because we don't want to, we want to tell the stories of the past and we want to get people excited about what's going on now, but we also got to show people a glimpse into the future because it's all about looking ahead and how much greatness is in, in front of you guys. So coach, when you draw up your vision board, when you sit down at night and you're dreaming in your bed, what do you see for Coach Jen Malcolm in this Golden Bears program? What, what is up, what's up next for you guys? I'm super excited. You know, I don't know if anybody knows or everybody knows that we're heading into the ACC. So Pac-12 is no longer in existence. So we're heading to the ACC next year. Um, so that's big for us. You know, we're going to be traveling to the East Coast four times a year. Um, long travel, but... Super excited. I think heading in there, we're pretty much middle of the pack in my mind. Um, you know, I've coached in the ACC for a couple years, so I know that league pretty well. And I'm excited for what we have. I'm excited for the girls that we have coming in. Um, the former staff did a great job recruiting, and we're recruiting our kids right now um, moving forward. So I'm excited. That, that's the biggest word that I can say right now. But um, looking forward to where we're going to go and you know, watch out for Cal. We're, we're going to be back up there, um, back where they used to be. And that's that's the whole point right now. Well, Coach, I've, I, I, we Kevin and I, we did some basketball tournaments, AAU this summer. And we was in, we was in Louisville. And uh, I don't know what it's called, the Louisville Convention Center. But the guy was like, man, the biggest tournaments we have all year long is these volleyball tournaments. He said it's like 200 courts yep. all crammed into one building. Coach, you got to send us a list of these tournaments so we can come out and uh, go check out some volleyball one, 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 one weekend. We're going to sit there all day long and just watch us nothing but some volleyball. But please, Coach, send us uh, send us over some stuff because uh, I heard it is absolutely absolute nuts in it's those uh, in those convention centers crazy and unlike basketball volleyball coaches get to stand pretty much for 12 hours a day we gotta we stand just, get we, you. Just, we just we just came back from a tournament the, the opening weekend that we can recruit it was this weekend and my staff and i did 13 hours day one 14 hours day two and i did eight hours the next day so <sighs> It's uh, a little crazy because it's oh. it's courts everywhere. There's just like one row of chairs around the court, and that's it. And parents sit, and as a coach, you get to stand. I'm gonna bring me one of them little them little pop up right, right. from Academy. Y'all see from the <laughs> disc. <Good laughs> <man. laughs> that's why uh, you gotta have good shoes, man. Okay. Hold up, y'all play against SMU this year, right? We do. We're actually coming to Ooh. SMU. Ooh. Oh, we'll oh, we know oh, one of the we know one of the assistant coaches. And we know the SID. Yeah, so we, we are. Coach. We definitely come. That's the perfect. 
that's gonna start it off for us right there, B Jones. There you All go. Right, so, Coach, do you have any shout outs you wanna give? Shout outs. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out my parents. My parents are everything. Um I'm gonna shout out my brother and his family. I have a, a niece and nephew that are twelve and nine, almost twelve, and my little niece is playing volleyball right now and she had her big first tournament this past weekend and they got first place in, in silver. So I'm so excited for them. So good job. Good job, P. Um, I'm going to shout out my head coach at Iowa State. Um, I wouldn't be the person I am today without her and everything she's done for me. Um, I'm going to shout out my high school coach, Marilyn Murrah. Um, she is the OG of the OGs. Um, she taught me everything I knew. And, and then I'm going to shout out... I'm going to shout out my staff here at Cal. They've been amazing. We've been grinding together for three weeks now, trying to get it all going. And, you know, we've had some ups and downs and everything else go, th go through. So they're, they're grinding and I wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in. So love them all. And, yeah, they're, they're my world right now. All right. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Mm -hmm. Tell me, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Can, can I shout out two? You can shout out four or five. I don't care. Shout out whoever you want to. Um, I'm going to shout out my new assistant coach, Alyssa Adrino. Um, I've known her since she was 15 or 16. Um, recruited her and everything else. So I just think she is an up-and-coming coach. She's only 25, but she knows it. She's going to kill it. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to shout out my old head coach at UCLA, Alfie Reft. Um, the man is a genius. He is part of the USA Olympic um, team as well. He's an assistant coach on there. So the man is brilliant. He knows his stuff. Um, so I'm going to shout out those two right now. All right. Wow. I know those are some big names. Thank you so much, coach. I'm super excited. All right, Coach Adrino, Coach Reft, y'all are officially on the clock. Let the world know that you are up next. Your ticket just got punched. And we are super excited about having you on the show. Kevin, I, I don't know. I got kind of I'm getting excited. These show these nominations are getting juicy. I'm telling y'all, this thing is going to be crazy. That is a glimpse into what you can look forward to if you lock in with us. All right, Coach Jim, Jen. Malcolm, you got next. You are the truth, coach. You are dog. No. Hey, you got that energy. You got that liveliness, that charisma, that, that energy, that just that vivaciousness. You are extraordinary. You are an icon. You are elite. You deserve a yeet. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. I love doing this show, KT. It's the best job in America. We had a great episode, Kevin. We won the chat. We won the moments of truth. Yeah. I'm feeling real good, man. So, hey, this y'all 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 lock in with us. Thank y'all for watching another episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next. This is your moment to become the superhero, become the MVP of this show. We need y'all to do those big, that SLT Trinity. Sacrifice right now. Everything. Let's come together. Hold hands. And in unity, push a, a boulder up a mountain. We need you to smash that subscribe button. We need you to hit that like button as many times as you possibly can. And we need you to send this episode out to as many people as you possibly can. And listen, don't forget to tap in with us. We are doing, uh, I'm telling you, we the hardest working show in the game. You ain't going to find the podcasters that's putting out as many episodes and talking with as many people as us. Go to uh, Ask Sports Life Talk, all one word, and you can lock in with more content and more amazing stories that we got to push out. And don't forget, if you want to be on the show, Coach Adreno and Coach Ref, I'm saying Coach Ref, right? Right? Yeah. I'm saying, okay. They got their seats. They got an invitation. We already, we, I'm, you know, I'm going to start, uh, you know, bl blueprint those shows right now. But if you got a story and you need to come on this show and uh and you think that you a dog we need you to go to our website slt you got next.com it's on the screen slt you got next.com and click on the nominate tab and tell us why you feel like you got next why you feel like you a mamba kt will, will schedule us some time to sit down with you and we will or, or give you an audition to be on the show and lastly Take You Got Next on the road. Listen to the smooth, sultry sounds of the mouth of the South and the velvet tones of the head coach, KT, on the go, in the car, 
in the kitchen, in the gym, in the locker room. It don't matter. We got you got next in the podcast version. I'm a huge podcast guy. And uh, so if you want to just listen to it while you're driving in your car, on your way, on your road trips, feel free to do it and just download the show wherever you download your podcast, whether it be Spotify, Apple, or I think we got a dozen other sites we upload to as well. So so make sure you tap it in with us uh, on the audio version as well if you're a podcast person. But I right, KT, let's go home. B. Jones, this is probably a top top 10 episode. It would have been a top five, but I didn't mm-hmm. win the championship round, so I'm not putting it in my top five. But now, Coach, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know when we got your back. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. It's been fun. All right, Coach, we got to test that dancing now. Move your body <laughs> like a cyclone. Come on, Coach, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to see that. Uh, <laughs> wow. You gotta ask my mom. My mom, my mom knows how to do the full body cyclone. So she's the There it is. Okay. We're gonna expect Mama Malcolm to come on next time and do that word at Sports Life Talk Nation. We love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big, y'all. Because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got Next, yeet! I knew you had next, cause you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag, cause you're always working. Like in due time, I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast the tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, 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 yeah